U.S. Commerce Department says Secretary Gina Raimondo will visit China next week to talk about the U.S.-China commercial relationship and areas for cooperation, uh, but also the challenges faced by U.S. businesses. Semiconductors are a big point of contention between the two countries. Just this morning, Bloomberg uh, reported on a warning from a global chip group that Huawei is uh, setting up secret factories across China that can allow the company to skirt U.S. sanctions. Join us now to talk about all this. In the current state of U.S.-China relations, Kyle Bass, founder and CIO of Heyman Capital Management. Kyle, I want to start with the journal piece earlier uh, this week that, that says the China model that for 40 years uh, raised GDP by 25 times, that it's now broken and that we aren't going to get 6 percent, that that is a pipe dream, and that they'll be lucky to get 3 percent from here on out. Do you think that she's backtracking on a lot of private sector initiatives? Did that cause this, or was it in a response because he knew this was coming? No. Uh, so good to be here, Joe. I think that uh, China's moving towards more of a party-based system, which is typical of communist parties. If you follow follow uh, the history of communist parties, you know they're they're allocating resources to state-owned enterprises. They are moving away from a market-based approach and moving more to a party-based approach uh, than they have been in the past. They are severing, they've severed all corporate level and macro level data to the West. I mean, if what you're trying to do is grow uh, an economic relationship with the West, you don't do the things that Xi Jinping's doing. And that's why it's so worrisome, I think. Uh, well, what would he be doing at the Wall Street? He still needs, okay, 800. Uh, 800 million people brought out of poverty, but uh, poverty. But the GDP per person is still under $13,000. Why would he think that he can get to where he wants to go, not doing it economically? What does he want? He, he wants to do it militarily. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it's hard for us to think about what she really wants. The 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 financial markets for Xi are means to his end, and and he's very much. A madman like Putin is. He has an ideological goal to quote reacquire the Taiwanese separatists. The laws that he's putting in place, like the counter foreign sanctions law and the new counter espionage law, and he's raiding companies like Bain Capital or Bain and uh, the Minsk Group and Capvision. He's making the in the work environment for Westerners in China impossible. And I think that's what Ramondo uh, is going to talk to them about. Uh, I think amongst other things, maybe she'll even talk about. The, the Chinese hacking of her official government email account, or maybe she won't. Uh, but, you know, things just continue to deteriorate. And this decoupling is more she's doing than it is the West's doing, right? It, it, she's been his worst enemy. I've seen uh, sort of China apologists say, yeah, maybe Taiwan by 2050 gets reacquired. Y you, you have a shorter time frame. You actually said maybe next year. Yeah, I mean, Joe, if you look at, if you really listen to Xi Jinping's speeches, forget about reading the press and what, what they get out of these speeches. Read what he says. Quite literally, since 2017, he's told you that his, life, his life's mission is, is the reunification of, uh, of China and Taiwan, and that his life would have been an abject failure if he doesn't achieve that mission. Well, you know, whether it happens 2023, 20, 2024, or five or seven, it's not 2050. She's 70 years old. Uh, so it, it is going to happen sooner rather than later. The China apologists, you know, remind me of, you know, the the, the Halifaxes and the Chamberlains of, of the UK going into World War II. You know, um, Hitler had invaded the Rhineland and, and had taken uh, Holland and, and um, Belgium. And, you know, you still had people wanting to sit down with Hitler and talk. Uh, I'm sure the China apologists and the think tanks that receive money from corporate interests that do business in China, we'll be saying that up until the very end. I think it's important to take a very objective view of what he's saying and then look at what he's doing uh, onshore. And I think the writing is on the Great Wall. It's all there. The slower growth that we're now anticipating, and I don't know whether there's going to be internal problems in, in China. So if we've been thinking that was going to happen for, for decades, and he, they keep a pretty uh, tight leash on the citizenry. Obviously. So what happens if, if 3 percent is the best the, comp uh, the country can do and, and the, the efforts to, to get GDP? I mean, I think Japan's 45,000 per person. So they're at 12,000. What if that stops? What does it mean for the West and for us? 
And what does it mean internally for China? You know, it's tough to look at things with such broad measures. When you look at the architecture of the, of the Chinese population, you note that there's still almost a billion Chinese living in, in rural areas, uh, living a much different life than those living in the urban areas. And so of the 1.35 billion people or however many people are there now, you've got a little less than a billion that are rural and you've got close to 400 million that have been really brought out of poverty and live in the urban areas. So looking at a broad number like uh, GDP per capita is a little misleading in my opinion. Uh, it's very barbell uh, over there. So, so I think that uh, this quote, the Chinese economic miracle, we're, we, we're on this, we're on a financial channel. We're here to talk about whether you should be buying Chinese stocks or not. Joe, you mentioned that their GDP has grown exponentially in 40 years. In the last 15 years, China's GDP has grown 505%. And if you invested your money in, the, in their primary index, the Shenzhen Shanghai 300 index, 15 years ago, you're down 31% in 15 years in an economy that's grown its GDP 500%. The U.S. has grown our economy in the same 15-year period 70%, and our market is up 315%, including dividends in the S&P. And we have the rule of law. We have trust. We have corporate, uh, let's say, oversight. We have regulatory oversight. China is the Wild West, and guess where the money's going? All the profits are going to management and the party. It's not going to Westerners. So at some point in time, the Westerners are going to realize that investing in China is just a terrible idea. All right, Kyle. Uh, the uh, China conversation, we, we could have you on every day to actually talk about it, but uh, thank you. And, and, and the Rangers, Rangers, Rangers got it going, don't they? Quite an offense. Yeah. Yes. All right. See you later. When we come back, we're going to take a closer look at this morning's retail earnings and tell you what you need to know ahead of the opening bell on Wall Street. Stay tuned. You're watching Squawk Box.